very proud of our football team. Um, um, start to finish, started great, which which what we challenged them to do. Um, you know, four touchdowns, the first four drives on offense. Defense had a couple three and outs in there, I believe, which was which was huge to seize the early momentum. Uh, you got a credit for Virginia Tech uh, for battling back, which is what they've done all year. Um, and when it got dicey right there as, as the third quarter turned to the fourth quarter, um, where it really could have gone either way, our, our guys really imposed their will uh, on the football game, made all the winning key plays in the fourth quarter uh, to secure our victory. A lot of gutsy performances, but uh, more than anything, I'm just proud of our seniors, proud that they get to leave Hard Rock Stadium for the last time as winners. Um, and, you know, and just their leadership this week, uh, the way they've, the way that they have set the example uh, for the young guys on this team will be, will be their legacy in a season where we didn't win as many games as we wanted to. Um, but in terms of laying foundations, I, I think the way that these guys have, have um, continued to play hard and set the example is, is, is very, very, is beyond commendable. And with that, I'll open up, for, with, open it up for questions. Thank you, Coach. If you've got a question for Coach Manny Diaz, please use the hand raise function on Zoom. And, Coach, we're going to start with Tim Reynolds from the Associated Press. Tim, go ahead. Manny, this, um, you've talked a lot about the resiliency of this group, whether it was all the close games and all that. Does, does tonight kind of epitomize what you've been talking about? I mean, you had to put last week to bed. Obviously, Blake's news on Monday. There's tons of noise, speculation, and all that other stuff. Is, is this kind of epitomize what you want, you know, this team to be as far as focusing on just what's in front of them and not anything external? Yeah, and, and, and tonight, to your point, tonight was really just an extension of the week because um, it, it, it couldn't have just happened tonight if they didn't, you know, if we didn't have our Sunday the way our Sunday went and if we didn't have our Tuesday, Wednesday practices uh, the way that they went. Uh, I thought the team was intentional all week of preparing themselves to play very well. But, but yes, in terms of your point, you know, the, the, the word that you hear coaches throw around all the time, maybe sometimes it's overused, is culture. You know, and, and we said this would be a culture over strategy game and that our culture eventually would see us through. And, 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 and again, even tonight, you know, obviously they made a run. Uh, there was a series, you know, where we weren't playing at our best. Um, but, you know, the, the words that you mentioned, the resiliency, the mental toughness, um, the resolve, not flinching, all those things as a coach. I mean, you're just, you're so proud to coach a football team that exerts those principles. I have to follow quick, Manny. It, the, the guys doing the, the swan dive or whatever you want to call it on the field and celebration when the clock hits zeros and you're smiling, guys are trying to carry guys off. Just what will that moment mean? To, I mean, you have games left, but what will that moment mean to you about this season? Thank you. Well, it was a reward for the older guys, for the seniors, you know, um, because they had they, they could choose, right? They could choose. And we've had guys here in the past that have, that have chosen, and they've not always, you know, finished what we started. And that's kind of what we, what we had challenged them and the team. You know, you, you start something, you finish it. And um, you, you, can't, you can't erase what happened last weekend, and, and no one will ever forget that, what happened last week. A lot of those guys had never lost to those guys. But what we said is we can win our last home game. And that's an everybody goal. Everybody had to play a part. The true freshman had to play a part. Um, everybody had to play a part and everybody did. So I just, I don't know where that came from. Um, and we're, we're, we're going to have one game a year. that's going to be a monsoon. It just happened to be tonight. And uh, I guess that was, you know, turned into a slip and slide spontaneously. Coach, we're going to go next to Mike DePasquale from WSVN. Mike, go ahead for Coach Diaz. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. I want to ask you, you said during the week that everything was about Virginia Tech, despite all the speculation. This is special for your team tonight. Can you just describe how special this was for you tonight in the midst of everything that's going on? I, the only way I think about it in that context is just you just you're just proud of it of of a, of a team that has those characteristics we, we mentioned earlier. You know, there, there's is not. It was about Virginia Tech. It was about our seniors. It was about setting them off the right way. Um, but you don't know because you look around college football, not everybody competes at the same level week in and week out, especially when results don't go your way. And, you know, we've got an 11-week resume, and there's, there's a lot of things on the resume we don't like. That's for certain. But 11 times out of 11, we, we've brought it. 
and, and our guys have competed. They've played hard for each other. Um, and, and that to me is, 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 is as a coaching staff, not me, as a coaching staff, I think that's the thing we're pro most proudest of. If I could follow up real quick, that smile on your face at the end of the game, we haven't seen that for a while. Uh, for you, just, I mean, just that smile, that jubilation. I mean, this had to be one of the happiest moments of the season for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a happy night. I, I can't, I can't remember my smile frequency and, and, and the, the, the intensity of the smile and all that to, to properly answer your question. But, but it, look, I, and, I, and I, you guys have probably seen something on TV, so I don't know exactly which, when smile you're talking about. But for me, it was watching the smiles of our seniors. You know, you get done, you walk over there with those guys and, and you just see the reactions. You saw the guys getting carried off the field. I mean, seeing Derek King get carried off the field and, and Derek smile, um, man, if that doesn't warm your heart, I, I can't help you. So I, I think that's a part that was, that was special to me. Coach, we'll go next to Gary Furman from Kane Sport. Gary, go ahead. Hey, Manny, how are you? Um, you just spoke about the, the Eric King and the season began obviously all about the Eric and um, has become all about Tyler Van Dyke. And it's really been pretty unbelievable. And he just keeps coming and coming and coming and firing and getting better. Uh, if you could talk about that a little bit. And uh, then a second question, a lot of the guys that participated in senior day tonight were not seniors. And if you could just talk a little bit about how that evolved and the guys have guys declared their uh, futures and did they ask to be part of senior night or did you make it optional? If you could just clear that up. Yeah, we asked, I, I assume you're talking about guys that would still have a COVID year of eligibility. Um, but guys that have probably competed for four years. I, I, is that kind of where you're going with that Gary? Yeah. Um, yeah. There were just, there were just a lot of those guys like, you know, DJ Ivy, Nessa Silvera, Cam yeah. Harris, Frierson, Bubba, you know, they all have eligibility left, but right. they all I think, participate. I, I think in their mind, they're seniors. I, I mean, I mean, the, the COVID, the COVID red shirt was a good rule. And you have to remember, you know, um, I mean, some teams in the Pac-12, I think, played four or five games last year. You know, I mean, we, we played a season. I, I think our guys, you know, and, and we will have some guys that have an opportunity to come back. But I think the, we, we, the majority of our guys, I think, as the year went on, um, Felt they were ready to move on. But, but to answer your question, yes, we, we, we sort of said, okay, you know, who's going to be a senior for senior day? Because it's, I know they're juniors, but it's a little bit, it's a little strange. The first part of your question was what again? Oh, about Tyler. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, look, I think two things have happened at once. I, I, I think obviously Tyler's development, you know, has been phenomenal. Every, every week he shows, you know, guts, courage, um, makes plays, you know, and today was all about the explosive play. Um, and, but I also think that, as an offense in year two of this system, I think we've improved. Um, I think everyone is starting to play better around the quarterback. And you see some of the catches that guys are making, um, you, know, in, in, you know, Rambo's resurgence to me is, is, is key of a story uh, to our offense. But, but the biggest thing is that the football team believes that Tyler Van Dyke can lead us. And I think that's, I think it's been true from, from day one. And, uh, and I think that's why our guys play like that. And even when we kind of, like I said today, when, when we sort of hit that spot right there in the third where we kind of stalled a little bit, we knew we could find the ways to the plays to make in the fourth quarter, which ultimately we did. Coach, last question for you is going to come from Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask you, uh, we saw Tyler go into the tent. How concerned were you? Uh, it looked like he slipped or something. And then the second question was just about Ryan Ragoni. We saw him go in there and make some pretty great plays for you guys breaking up the screen pass there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tyler went to get, you know, like you mentioned, he slipped and, and he was getting checked, checked out on, checked up on. And, you know, and that, and that a little bit affected our, our decision-making process on those last couple of drives of the first half. We can really get into halftime, you know, and see, see, you know, see what the status was. And I thought Tyler again was very gutsy and courageous coming out in the second half. Um, and yeah, I mean, Ryan, Ryan's a good football player you know, and, and made some really, really key plays. The big time play he made in the first half was sniffing out a screen. I mean, they've always got great deceptive red zone screens. And he made a great play on that. Obviously made the sack on a, on a, on a green dog uh, in, the, in the second half. So um, he, he's, we, we kind of joke, we kind of call him coach Ryan because he's, he's so intelligent. He wants to be a coach. He, you know, sits and talks to us all the time about, you know, strategy and, and, and the ins and outs of defense. And, um, and it was a game where, where he had a role to play. And I'm, I'm just, pr I'm proud of him for, 
for finding a way to play his role and and um, and make plays for us.